back to the Dowie Talks Expert Series. Our guest tonight is Canadian martial artist Ronnie Yi. Ronnie has been teaching Chen style Tai Chi since the 1980s. He's trained throughout North America and in China. And I sat down to talk to him about his teaching and his training and also his experience with mitzvah technique, which is an integrative movement discipline used for re rehabilitating injuries and self-care that's uh, been particularly helpful to Ronnie and I think will probably be of interest to anyone who's in the martial arts as we all experience some sort of injury along the way. Um, I hope that you find this interview informative and enjoyable. And if you like this type of content, please let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Ronnie Yee, everybody. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Hi, Bill. How are you doing? I good. appreciate uh, you doing this interview with me. This is fantastic. Yeah, it was good to finally catch up with you. I know we played a little bit of email tag there for a little bit, but we're here now, so it's good. Yeah, I'm um, glad uh, Pastor Yang uh, got us introduced. This is very nice. Yeah, he really enjoyed talking with you, and uh, you know, he wanted me to talk to you as well, so it's it's good to be able to meet you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, you know, it's a question I usually ask everybody to get things started off, but how, how did you come to get interested in martial arts in the first place? Okay, so um, I'm sure of all the interviews you did, it's probably the same story, right? Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, because I'm, I'm a child of the 70s. So when you see those movies, uh, you, you get kind of interested in it, and then you uh, find your local school. Because I'm from a small small city in uh, central Canada, and you probably never heard of. Uh, it's, it's, it's called Regina. And it's a yeah. province of Saskatchewan. It's a yeah. yeah, I know where Regina yeah. Yeah. I used so, to live in uh, Minot, North Dakota. So it's oh, like so right below it. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so we've, I, of course, uh, my cousins were taking martial arts, so I went to this local school. So probably around twelve years old. Uh, so and they mainly focused on southern styles, but really that teacher, he did. He was a master, well, call it master of all, all, all trades, right? So he did Wing Chun, Praying Mantis, and Shaolin, and so on. So we just kind of gone to a much podge of that, and it's quite skillful. Um, within that, uh. As I'm as I was training, so I was 13, and then I it, it, something kind of because there's an aggressive side to me maybe at the time, right? I thought this wasn't uh, not enough sparring and and not enough uh, uh, we'll see practicality where it's like you know, impact, right? So I went to a Charlie Foot school in the in the same of course in the same city here, and uh, where it's it's quite aggressive and and it, they they've they say they validated through winning tournaments and so forth, right? Uh, so I took that. And then, I, you know, as a child, you you don't really know. You're kind of a, you, you, we'll call it a traitor. <laughs> when I was, you, know, you went to another school, it didn't seem right. But I didn't realize I just took another system. Yeah. Then that's when uh, my Tai Chi journey came into play. When I was probably 16, um, Chen Zhonghua was uh, a, interning at my high school. Oh, wow. And um, this is a... Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap myself up. I'm quite you know young, arrogant. I wear the Bruce Lee outfits in high school, even right. I got the, I got the buttons and I got the jacket and every day, but nice. and uh, walking around all arrogant and showing off to my friends. And I see this this martial artist in the hallway, and he always looked young. Okay, so so I thought he was a student, but so I thought, oh, this guy, I can take on anybody in the school, and I can take him on too. So one day there was a. Uh, um, Announcement is a Tai Chi. Anyone who take Tai Chi, um, meet at room, you know, 35 or whatever it was. And I thought, well, I'll go there and just show my stuff, even. <laughs> right? yeah. I don't care about Tai Chi. What is this Tai Chi stuff? So I went there and uh, I'm sitting in the back row with my arms crossed and thinking I'm, I'm good and all that. Right. So he, he knew I, I was showing off in the hallways. So he goes, hey, he, so he chose me for a demo to come up here and the typical, you grab me and try to punch me. So I grabbed him. I thought, I looked at my friends in the class and I thought, oh, I'll just punch this guy. And I went down to my knees thinking, this is something very different. The quality is very different from what I've done. Like I've done the Kung Fu and at the heart external training. Yeah. And yeah, this is, this is, that's my first shot of what Tai Chi was or what a different quality was. So from then on, I started taking that, of course, while I was still in my in the other schools, right? Still doing Charlie right. Foot, still doing the Southern Systems, and then um, I'm I'll, I'm trying to make a long story short here. As I was going through learning that, um, Chen Zhonghua left to Edmonton to um, teach, so he left me in charge. So it's kind of odd because I was still in my teens, and he had a class of adults, 
So you think about it, we're classmates and I just took over. So yeah. what, kind of, what kind of respect would they show me right. as a teenager teaching my own classmates, right? But over time, you know, you have to develop the skill to, to kind of go ahead and just, you know, with uh, lack of a better term, fake it till you make it, right? right? So I, I did that. And then within there, um, um, I started taking Bagua from another uh, master from China that arrived in the city. And, and even there, I started dabbling in everything. So I went to the Aikido because uh, the reason I, you, you may, most people might ask, why did I, you know, not stick to one system and just kind of push? I did the system. I was, I'm practicing it still, but I always felt, well, you know, maybe Steven Seagal came into the, 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 the scene and I started taking Aikido or Bagua was an interesting thing because of another influence from a movie scene or something. I, I get influenced quite easily, it sounds like, right? But I started taking these other systems and trying to look for, I won't call it the truth, but just something different, right? Yeah. Of course, uh, then you you then you have friends in Taekwondo and uh, karate, boxing. Have many friends in all. Uh, most martial artists have friends in all the different systems, right? So I started taking. Uh, uh, I'll just say I dabbled. I'm never going to say I was good at any of those things, like Kali, right, and the Jeet Do. Yeah. But because my friends did it, and I took it, I took workshops. But I've never intensively did anything deeply. But um, Tai Chi was my main one, and then I got really deep into praying mantis. And then I started teaching Wushu. So I went to China. I went to China for a total of seven times. And I couldn't speak Mandarin at the time, right? So I yeah. went there to learn and I actually met Grandmaster Hong, the one that uh, um, the system I'm, I'm currently, you know, uh, teaching right now. I uh, met him in 1991. And that's, uh, that's the biggest, we'll say, stage of my life of what Tai Chi really was. And I really chasing chasing the unicorn, that magic, what, yeah, what yeah. real Tai Chi is, right? I'm sure all of us and your listeners and and, and watchers of your podcast will, will know you're always chasing that, that one special thing, right? So um, just a quick um, recap of that. So I went to China in 91, met Master Hong. I never trained with him. I just had a picture with him. And then I met all his students, his, his, his top disciples. And I thought, again, I, my arrogancy came out, right? I'm just going to set my egos on when this, when this is in this podcast, my egos come out quite a bit at the time because 91, I was quite arrogant. I thought, oh, I knew Tai Chi. I, I did Bagua, I did, you know, Taekwondo and had all this. And I met this other master named Master Liu, one of Hong's disciples. And then, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, Bill, just let's recap back, uh, sorry, backtrack one step. I went to train with another guy named Zhang Lin, another Hong disciple. I trained with him for about a month and a half just private, intensive. It's one of those scenes from movies where he yeah. beat me. I'm in the hot sun for three hours, just pouring sweat. And he, he yelled at me every second he got. And I my legs got bigger and I lost part of 10 pounds <laughs> in that uh, training process, right? Yeah. And I, thought, oh, I got these legs now, I got power. And I thought a month and a half of you know training in Tai Chi, if, what, how much do you have at 21 years old? But I thought it was really good. And I had all this past training in, inside my experiences, right? So I met Master Liu, going back to the, where Hong was training. And Master Liu was standing there. And he's a, quite an older man and chubby, right? I thought, oh, so this is the, this is the key bill. Chen Zhonghua was there because I couldn't speak Chinese. He was translating for me. He said to me, I, um, I can't recall exactly what he said, but he goes, hey, we're here. He said this in English, so no one understood in the room. He says, hey. You're here in China. Prove prove this. Prove Tai Chi works. Take this old man out. It kind of not not a weird way, but not like, yeah. right. Try him out. Yeah, yeah. We either go back to Canada thinking Tai Chi is not good, or it's you know prove something to you. I said okay, I'll do it. I'll use my Wing Chun against them and all those right. I touched him and I just clapped. I could not even lift my feet up. I was connected to the floor. So in hindsight, presently, I know what he did, but at the time, it was pure magic. Yeah. Right. That connection was beautiful. I just I couldn't do nothing. I and my eyes lit up. This is what I was looking for. And this is what Tai Chi is. So I was always chasing that. But again, uh, because of my lack of skill. And so we'll jump into the, you know, the the, the, the 90s here. Uh, my, I, like I said Mantis and I did Wing Chun and all that. Um, my lack of skill. I thought, oh, Tai Chi doesn't work. It's because I wasn't good at Tai Chi. Yeah. Right. Even though I was teaching it. I, I was good enough to teach it you know, the crudely, the physical as aspect of it. But I thought, oh, Tai Chi is not good. So I, that's why I jump system to system. I kept going, well, I better teach some, some of this stuff, this stuff, because it's, it's deficient. But as time went on, I realized, wow, um, 
I'm still not good at it. So as we all, as all martial artists, know, uh, we know, I don't know about you, Bill. I have a ton of injuries from back in the day. Sure. Yeah. Same here. But, right. Right. So back in my kickboxing days, my, my friend, my friend fell on me, hurt my knee and it never stopped. So yeah. I had, where well, you're talking about the eighties, when you get surgery, it wasn't that orthoscopic or a little hole. They yeah. cut you open, well. right? <laughs> right. Tendons are open. And um, yeah. so it was a point in 1994. I'm sorry. I'm jumping back and forth here. No, you're okay. So my, I went, I was at Chen uh basement, um, pushing hands with this person because I drove there for eight hours to Edmonton. I was pushing hands, but I was so tired. But through the training in China, I was taught to not move my feet because if you move your feet, you, you lost. Yeah. Right. You lose your balance. So I was pushing hands with this person and I basically fell asleep in midair. I was standing asleep, but yeah. My, my training took in, my, my basic uh, instincts kicked in and my foot st stayed in place. So as I was getting pushed, I kind of fell asleep and I kind of went down and I was in a dream state. My kneecap came with me while I was going down, but my feet stayed in one plus spot. Right? <laughs> so my, my kneecap went around my leg. Yeah. Right. So dislocated my knee, horrible, couldn't walk for years. So this is uh, really re relevant to my story, while, how, what my stages are in Tai Chi, how I got better. Because um, uh, my kneecap snapped out of place. I had already had a bad knee. Um, I've torn hamstring from doing a lot of wushu. Um, so I have all these injuries. Uh, my knee was so bad, I couldn't straighten it. Oh, sorry, I couldn't bend it for years. So I even had ulcers from just depression, like meaning I couldn't walk. Forget about martial arts. I couldn't even walk, right? So, so I was still teaching at the time. Even I had a cast on, took the cast off, couldn't walk. So years of just drastic knee pain and people are saying by the time you're 35 and you know orthopedic surgeons saying by the time you're 35 100 you're gonna have a you're gonna have to have a knee replacement 100 and your hamstrings are shot and you can't do anything so jumping all of all that past training jumping to 2006 2007 i i got in i i was um going out with this this person and she was doing a thing called mitzvah mm -hmm. you heard of Alexander technique or yeah. Feldenkrais technique, yeah. Yeah. Right? the polyal realignment. It's the it's what we'll call it the kind of an amalgamation of all the, the two. Okay, uh, so I was doing that, and I really, Bill, I really did not enjoy it. I looked at it, I go, this is because I'm a martial artist. This, this that's ridiculous looking. Whatever this is, like body alignment, kind of it doesn't even use any effort. How can this even be good for you, right? So because you're you're you always need to do what your partner does. Right. You, you don't you don't it doesn't matter if you don't like it. You just kind of follow along just to because you're going out with a person. So I did it for about a year, a year and a half. Miraculously, I don't know how it worked. My entire body had no pain in it. Wow. My, my knee this today looks like it's in the wrong spot. <laughs> it looks like it's sideways. I even went in for like surgery just to really um, cut my um, cut the fascia on my uh, uh, TFL okay. just to release my kneecap because it's in the wrong spot. Today, it's in the wrong spot. I have zero pain. I can boast at 54 years old today, I have zero pain in my body. My hamstrings, I'm more flexible now than I was in my 20s. That's incredible. Lack of pain, right? And so it's it's quite, I'll say around 2006. So that happened. This this mitzvah, I did not like or enjoy. I'm now I'm preaching it. Because mm. right? it fixed me. It, it cured me, basically. So now I'm thinking... But I'm still a martial artist. I'm still doing the wushu because that's my living. I, I did wushu as my passion, tai chi. But I must have been doing it. We'll call it wrong. Like yeah. the mechanics are wrong, right, Bill? So, so it's, it's it's the mechanics are wrong. So I'm still hurting myself, then realigning myself, then to one step forward, one step back. It's constantly doing that, and that was what was happening. And I thought, okay, this is ridiculous. My knees are still hurting. Um, even I I fix it, and then I, I train. This can't be right. This just cannot be right. So when, when Chen Zhenghua um, translated the Hong's book, a part of his book, I started reading it because I can't read Chinese, right? I can't speak Chinese. So I started reading it and I noticed the, the uh, exact same wording because physics is the same, right? Right, okay. yeah. Um, connection, we hear this in all Tai Chi, we hear in all martial arts, uh, spring energy, we talk about Peng and so forth. Yeah. And I thought, I'm going to cross over these two things. It has to be the same because we're talking about spirals. The only difference now is, um, I'll stop talking about my history in a second here because that's that's basically where it, it kind of my martial arts training ended. 
like for uh, adding more to my uh, repertoire. So when I started merging uh, mitzvah um, approach and theory into the Tai Chi, because the spirals are in there, the alignment is there. What's the difference though? The only difference is one is we'll say martial art based, one is healing based, and it's we're sitting on a on a razor's edge. So I'm also just to give you a history. I'm also a massage therapist by 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 trade, but but I don't. My unique approach to fixing a body is very different than so-called massage. It's using um, bone alignment yeah. and then. Um, We'll say neuromuscular connection, re reteaching the, the body to, with my manual therapy, to reteaching the, the body to, to move uh, without pain, right? So, but in martial arts, as you know, let's say, let's just talk about Tai Chi itself, right? Or Bagua or Shingi, the internal arts, is that you connect, capture the person's balance, and you move it, right? Mm -hmm. You to take advantage of the, 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 the deficiencies in their body. So, saying that, I merged the two together. So if, if the mitzvah helped my body, if the mitzvah had made me pain-free, whatever, the only thing acting on me by solo, as you know, when you practice solo forms and so forth, the only thing acting on you, only force acting on you is gravity, right? So, but in martial art, there's force coming in you. There's a chaotic force coming at you. There's a person trying to destroy you, right? <laughs> so destroy your balance and hurt you, damage you. So how can I revert that into the mitzvah body? So that means you have to take that. That's why this is the stage of where I understood, walk through the door of what Tai Chi was, what the magic was in 1990, what I felt, what I can do now, what the masters did back in the day is because you took the force, dissipated it to a point of, well, let's say, you know, how we say four ounces beats a thousand pounds, right. take it to the point where it's the most efficient point where they're weak and put the mitzvah body in it. The mitzvah body is just structure. That's all it is, it's not a martial art. But for us in martial arts, we're, we're, we have pung, so it's structure. Put that structure into the weakest point in a tangent line, while with myriad of, as you know, uh, connections and dissipation and, and roll back and press and so forth, right? And a brute. So we have all that going on all at once. And that's what the stage I'm at now. So. I felt you know, even the last five years, it, it just it incrementally just got better and better and better because once you have that understanding and that mindset, that basic, I now I feel I'm doing Tai Chi today. That wow. took me years, right? So yeah, but now yeah. I'm pain free and I'm doing good. I feel I'm I'm a, I'm not I'm never boasting about I'm staying low key, saying that I'm doing good Tai Chi now. I can actually practice. I'm on the right path. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting, and it's great that you found something that you could. Um put into, I guess, a scientific framework or a physiological framework, because, you know, we all have this experience. Well, let's go back for a minute to talk about that experience that you had in high school with um, Chen Chong Hua when you got just dropped to your knees. Hmm. Um, I think I was probably, you probably had no framework for that, right? You had no idea what was going on. You had no idea what was going on. You just dropped. That, right. so I, I think I was in my mid twenties. The first time I had something like that happen to me, I've been doing martial arts since I was 10. And it was with a very small Japanese woman, uh, an elderly Japanese woman who had terminal cancer. And we were practicing Aikido together. And she was just, I don't know what she was doing. She was just crumpling me to my knees and there was no pain, you know, and I was, and, and I, I, I was so happy because I was like, okay, this is real. These things that I've read about are real, but now how do I do it? Mm -hmm. And just like you, I bounced around from art to art. You know, I kept doing my same arts, but I, I kept looking and looking and on the long way, along the way, got so many broken bones, you know, and, and injuries and things like that. And I think a lot of people spend their entire lives doing that without having the experience you had where you found something from the outside where you could see that, yeah, it is a razor's edge. It's a, it's a thin line. And it, right. it kind of explains why some older masters are in great health and the other older masters have titanium knees and hips. Right, exactly, exactly. So this is really, uh, you're paralleling uh, just even in gender. My Aikido teacher was also female. Yeah. So I took Aikido for about two years. Yeah. Of course, like at the time, like you said, I don't know what's going on. I'm like 20 years old and she's just tossing me like a rag right. How can a woman be that strong? This is like, yeah. this is, right. but you, you know, it is not strength-based. Right. She's yeah. just taking advantage of your, your weakness, right? <laughs> in a weird way, right? You think about it. So yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, I've, uh, 
So uh, hey, one more thing, because uh, we'll kind of, uh, you know, I'll bounce around in my head of uh, what I'm, I've been training, but uh, little ideas and and stories. Um, Chen Zhonghua said this to me one time, I forget when it was, what year it was, but he says, it's a good thing you didn't train with Hong himself, because I was there in China. The reason being is, it's like that say, saying, um, never meet your heroes. Yeah. If I train with Hong and I realize at the time, I wouldn't know what he did. I, I have no clue even you know, at the time. But if I knew what he did, I might, um, you, 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 how would you say this? There, I'm, I'm chasing an unattainable peak right now. Yeah. I don't know what he is. It's an idea to me. Hong was an, is still an idea to me in my brain. I read his books. I learn from a lot of his students, right? Every, all of us have deficiencies. We try to improve ourselves constantly. And I watched, you know, that's how I got, I improved myself. I watched this guy and, and I'm not putting anyone down. They're very skilled people, but they're kind of weak here. I'm kind of weak there. I'm kind of, and every, I just kind of fill in the spaces and, and fill up myself. But Hong is an is a unattainable peak to me, yeah. right? It's something, you, it's an illusion, but I'm yeah. chasing that. So that means there's no end to it. But if, if I knew how good he was, what if he had deficiencies, I would kind of, oh, he's all right. <laughs> right. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I, I'm curious about this mitzvah technique. I've heard of Feldenkrais and Alexander, but I've never heard of mitzvah before. Uh, when did this start to come into, uh, come to be like commonly known, I guess? Okay, that's a very good question because I just talked to one of the main teachers in this, this city. Um, the, the originator is from Toronto. He had one, one of his best disciples, we'll say, we'll call it students, lives in a small town called Davidson just outside of Regina. She moved here. She only trained two or three people. And right now, presently, we're talking about mitzvah has been around for probably 30 years. Okay. Presently, there's probably 20 people on planet Earth that do it. Like teach it, I'm saying. There's more people that practice it, but teach it. Less than 20, probably 15. And two of the major ones are in this city right now. So they were teens when I was already doing it, right? Like I was already practicing it a little bit. But I never got into it. But just to get into what mitzvah is, um, Feldenkrantz and and Alexander. I don't. I'm 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 ignorant. I don't know enough about it. But I I, I can. I read enough that you know, it's the alignment. It's the it's the gravity going through the skeleton and so forth, and, and energy going through. What mitzvah is, is the teacher here. She broke it down into a system versus where you go. For example, Bill, um, just do pong for me and relax what is that you have to break it down into the physiology the the mechanical aspects of what the tailbone the top of the head and what tongue is and how you use it against force right so paralleling that mitzvah this woman named amelia h kush she broke it down into almost a hundred exercises because she was a professional ballet dancer so she knew the body really well she goes you need to do this to open the hip open the shoulders open the spine open that and every piece of the body she developed from probably 10 10 drills for right and then she also did body work meaning uh table work where you're actually laying on a table and she maneuvered to you mm. so i caught her which is fantastic i caught her at her peak of uh, developing the system i caught her being that i was here i was with that her best students right going out with her best student so i was learning at the same time but like i told you i didn't like it right this is tai chi this horse dance and this and this and how what can, how can this mitzvah stuff be good so to explain, so mitzvah is at its core using gravity, your structure going into the ground and springing through the, the body. And as any bound parts, we try to unbind through all these exercises. Does not sound familiar with Tai Chi, right? You're standing there in this the Jan Zhuang, you're relaxing, you're, you're being mindful, unbinding and so forth. And then in every little, every motion of your, any system form, Yang style, Chen style, whatever, Bagua, you're moving through with maintaining unboundness, yet still structure. Yeah, like kind of what people refer to as blockages. It some... blockages, exactly. The kink in the hose, right? So Misfa is entire system dealing with those blockages. No martial arts, of course, just this entire system of being pain-free, but incrementally, um, I like to do words shaving. It isn't like unblock it. They shave off a little bit. Hence, it takes years. This kind of, here, I'll give you an example, Bill. 
uh, let's say if I if I stretch like this, wait, don't don't no, don't stretch like that. Let me pull your tail. But like, they'll put two fingers on your sacrum, and just give you a reference point, and go like that, and then you kind of feel it. You counter it with the top of your head. That's the amount of effort there is. <laughs> where 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 where? If, if let's say we're we're training, and let's say nineteen ninety one, where I was training, and I was doing a, a motion, the guy would slap me in the face and push my arm across my body and throw me to the ground. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're doing it wrong and do it like this. And then <laughs> you yell at me. Where Miss was like, no, 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 no. Wait, wait. You don't even allow me to stretch even a little bit. Like, just a little bit. That's just too much effort. Right. Hence, now you can see why I was like, Miss was no good. Because that's just like, yeah. what is that? That's just fluffy motion, right? Yeah. That's every motion. Where's the effort? But over time, it opens and opens and opens. And it's just, your, your skeleton's free because there's yeah. no bone that parts, no more fascia and tendons pressed up against you. Your bones are now allowed to open. Right. So that's the and then trying to maintain that because the first of all, Bill, it's pain free. I will not here. I'll give you my philosophy of this. I will not. I will learn art because it's kind of cool. There's cool techniques in it. If you show me something, I don't really disrespect it. It's great. I will not go into that art like if it hurts my body, if it goes away from the mitzvah framework. If I have to do wrestling, your knee has to do this and your your arms have to do this. I'll learn it. It's It's great technique. But I won't do it because it, it's longevity wise, it cannot last. It just won't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting to think about it like that because we all tend to forget as martial artists that the martial arts that we practice were the difference between life and death when they were developed. So uh, people that practice these arts, they weren't necessarily expecting to live to be old. That they had a fight that they needed to win and they had to make their body as hard as possible, as quickly as possible. And in the process, you know, we've all seen people with, you know, hands with, you know, calluses and deformities and things from practicing iron palm and things like that. So I think there's a lot of carryover from some of that older style training that's not advantageous to us as we start to age. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm sure you have friends and yourself included or my, myself where they practice an art. Yet they have a hip replacement, like you said earlier, hip replacement. Yeah. Or they, they can barely get up in the morning, but yet they're, you know, let's say a jiu-jitsu guy. I, I'm jiu -jitsu, great art. I love it. Uh, absolute art. Um, but you see guys with herniated disc and, and with the cauliflower ears and the fingers that can't even pick up a cup anymore. And that that's not healthy. But yet they're, they're in martial art terms, they're a deadly person in that way, in the martial terms. But yet health-wise, they can barely move in the morning and they're just groaning, right? And that's not good. <laughs> Right, you no, can't and, live that. Yeah. yeah, it's very ironic to me, too, because it's a good example. And of course, it can happen in any art, not just jujitsu. But, you know, when you you're practicing for what originally I'm assuming is self-defense purposes, mm -hmm. and then you have ended up beating yourself by training like that, you've you've gotten hurt far worse than you would have gotten hurt if you just got. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Funny point. That's a funny point. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I get um, I get the idea because, you know, that's why people cut down traditional arts. It's not enough pressure tested. There's yeah. not enough hits and, 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 and conditioning. I, I understand, I totally understand that. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, you, you, we have to balance that as we know what to balance the, uh, what, be, how do you say, don't be delusional, right? Some people are just delusional. They're gonna, my chi is gonna throw you across the room. Right. <laughs> so, but uh, you have to, this is purely about, like Master Hong said this, every art is good, he'll take other arts, theories and concepts if the theory prevails and it's validated yeah absolutely. it has to be validated right in the end because i've taken a lot of arts and i'm like i guess like i said earlier i don't boast by saying i'm good at any of them is that i watch something and i do something and i go it's the same elbow down it's the right. same grounding of the foot yeah. who can be better as you know bill you i've i love this saying and how they say in, in jiu-jitsu i'm sure they say in other arts too a black belt is exactly the same as a white belt. Just at a, the fundamentals are at a deeper level. Yeah. We're doing the same motions as a, when we first start teaching, when we first started in, in the 80s, right? right? The exact same wording, even maybe we're even doing less as that we did in the 80s. We're more efficient now. So it's like a, it, we're doing less, but we're better at that one thing. Yeah. Like back in the day, what relaxation and stand straight? What does that even mean? Right. I am standing straight and relaxed, but right. that's, it's, it's yeah. much more deeper than that, as you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, given that you studied all these different arts, um, 
do you think that you would have had the capacity to understand what you what it was that you were coming across when you came across mitzvah if you hadn't gone through all this prior training and and injuries and so forth? That's that's a great question. I, um, you are as we know we are the person we are today through our past. Sure. Jesus, without these injuries, that was that was my blessing in disguise, right? Because without that knee injury. I wouldn't care. I'd move crazily. My knees would be flying all over the place and I, I and if I didn't have any pain, I'd be moving incorrectly. I have this pain and it's like such an extreme, awful pain and I couldn't walk anymore. I had to move correctly. You, you're forced to. Yeah. You, you in, in push hands and all that right now, you can't even get me to move my knee correct, incorrectly because it just hits that path. It, that's all it knows and it's all it, that's all it does. And I'm going to use it constantly in that correct path. It will never do anything... I won't, I'll say uh, with error, right? Because it has to be precise. Um, and same with, uh, like I said, uh, a crossover. A lot of my students always ask me, sort of kind of just kind of jump into another oh, you're fine. On a topic, but it kind of relates. I do because in order to fix a, another human being, like, you know, through uh, a therapy and all that, you have to be precise. You can't just, just jump in there and move their arms around and knees. You got to be, you got to, you're, you're, you got to actually listen inside their body and go inside and know how to unbind and release and so forth and align right um one more passion i have and uh uh this is even more passionate than martial arts i do magic yeah <laughs> so i have that weird mindset uh it's almost an ocd mindset magic is only right or wrong and if i do a trick for you bill you see they're going to be really good and you're impressed or it's horribly wrong <laughs> right so in tai chi as we know when you do a move, let's say a, a, just simple application. We, I compare it to analogy of a, a sniper, one bullet. You only have one bullet. You better be precise. And you got to listen to the wind, wipe the sweat off, and breathe. So hence the stillness, right? The, the stillness in motion, emotion, the stillness, so forth in, in, our, in our terms of, of martial arts. But you got to be still and be on all the time. So uh, saying that... Um, the how going back to the sorry going back to what you talked about the alignment and all that and what all the past injuries i've had yes of course i wouldn't have gotten where i am without these injuries there's, there's no doubt um but saying that i could have took two paths right i went this path of injury free i didn't want it to be as much pain or i could have just get well i'll just walk off the pain and right. i'll be much worse i would have two new knees <laughs> i wouldn't be able to walk i would get up groaning yeah i could have been that person too so but my Tai Chi, of course, has, um, we'll say, of course, uh, excelled to this day due to the, I went to the right path, right? Yeah. I could have been really good at application and, and throwing people around and all that going on the other path, but I would have been in so much pain too. Yeah. yeah. So. Go, going back to your earlier training um, when you went to China and, and even before that, because you, you were pretty lucky geographically speaking for a small town, you had quite a, quite a few good teachers come through your town. Uh, at what point did you start to get interested in the healing aspect that's adjacent to all these martial arts? Did you start to look into things like bone setting and massage when you were younger, or was that something that came much later? Hmm. Um, this is, a, I, I just talked about to the, the I said, there's, a, there's two Mitzvah teachers in the city here. I just had a chat with her, and I, and I, and I think there's actually a book of Saskatchewan healers, um, and it's nowhere else. The reason I feel martial arts, like martial arts, I'm not saying, you know, there's tons of martial arts around the world that are amazing. Regina, because it's such a small place, we just focus on that thing mm -hmm. and we get good at it. There's no distraction. We don't go hiking. We don't do this or that. We just, I like Tai Chi and I focus on Tai Chi. And so being ge geographically here, I had nothing else to do, <laughs> right? My friends did this. And that was the only, like, there's the only karate school, the karate school there, only kung fu school in the city. I didn't have 35 to choose from. Yeah. Right? So I went to that one, and then you feel, well, oh, back, back in the day, we had no, don't have social media. Like, who's good, who's not? We have no reference point. Right. So we just, this is what we're going to do. So you only had your own mind to think about it, your own uh, self, so that if you felt, if you're quite aware of what's happening, depends on your objective. I was very, how do you say, uh, martial orientated. I, I want to fight and I want to do this. So if it didn't go there, I, I thought there's something off about this. I'm going to take another system. 
that guy is the only person that teaches, uh, you know, whatever. And this woman's teaching Aikido. It's the only school I had. I didn't have options. So I put forth as much effort into that. And also because, like I said, it's a small city, easy to get to. I don't have to drive across two hours of traffic. I go there every day if I had to, right? Because you have no friction, right? Just, which is fantastic. That's why it was so good here. Um, I, but again, saying not saying that, of course, San Francisco, New York, right? Where you are, there must be amazing big names that we, you know, you, I can't get to them, right? But same time, it's more simple here, right? right. So it's easier to change, yeah. I understand that. Yeah, the, the planes are like that. You know, people don't realize that it's it's almost like living in a desert in a way. There's not a lot of distractions, you know. It's, right. So in my not, uh, what 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 schools are around you? And uh, uh, you know, I I wasn't really training that much when I was there. It was a long time ago. This was probably about 20 years ago. Um, there there was a there was a couple of local guys that had done some like older like karate styles and stuff like that. But at the time, I was still doing I was doing Wing Chun that I'd learned in another place. So I just kept doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, so you try to yeah, that's it's uh yeah it's, it's just like you because you do martial arts and another person sees you and he goes i do wing chun or i do bagua and then you just you just you kind of you want to trade or someone does jiu-jitsu yeah. like one person right a friend who learned from somebody in china or hong kong or, or san francisco or whatever but yeah it's, it's very interesting yeah um but i'm very glad it's the right place right time oh another thing uh William, is that I was 21 when I went to China. I always said this. I was young and stupid enough. I will go through the hard training. Just smart enough to understand the concepts. Now, if you take that age, push it down a little bit. If I train at 18, I hate Tai Chi. What's yeah. this? Peng yeah. Jian. I was 35. I'm, I'm broken. I can't do this hard training in China. 21, just right... And it was the it was at the peak, right before Hong passed away, where you know how, politics in every martial art, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So there's the students were still together. Where I did, they didn't mind me training with that guy or this guy or this woman or that person. Now after Hong died, of course, everyone I am better. That don't go learn that person. This never happened at 21. At 25, it all blew up when Hong passed away. So. Right. So I was right at the peak. I was learning from everyone and no one cared. And actually, they insisted I go train with that person or that person. Yeah. Right. So it was, it was, it was, it was a great time. It's perfect timing. And like, like I said, the, my body was, was uh, strong enough to do it and just, just smart enough to learn, <laughs> just understand it, just to push through. Right. Just stubborn enough. Yeah. yeah. So what are you, what are you teaching now? What are you concentrating on now as far as your martial arts practice? It's just purely uh, Chen style, Hong's, Hong's method. The, 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 I don't like using the word practical method, but I, I get, uh, right? Because it's almost like the other isn't up the other Chen style, not practical. No, it's not about that, right? I don't know. Maybe they just want to differentiate themselves, just say the practical method, but Hong's, Hong's way. Yeah, right? Hong's it's just method. a way to do yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. So right now, that's all I'm doing. Um, I'm, I'm currently, I really want to, as a 54 years old, I might do jujitsu. Yeah, I, I'm. <laughs> I at least twice a year, at least twice a year, I have to talk myself out of doing it because I I did it. I'm, I'm about the same age. I'm a few years younger than you are, but I when I was younger, I, I did jujitsu when it first started becoming popular back in the early 1990s, and um, then I got back into Chinese martial arts and and Filipino martial arts and Japanese martial arts. But um, I all the time I'm like really want to do jujitsu. Uh, and then I, I, I think about all of the injuries that I've had and I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't know if I need to be uh, injured at that level at the age that I'm at right now. I might just have to keep, you know, count my blessings. I don't know. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll start when I'm 60. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk to you then too. We'll maybe we'll both start at 60. Yeah. We'll, well, we'll come back <laughs> to the <laughs> method and see. Yeah. But um, so <laughs> can, Sorry, go ahead. no, no, go ahead. With the with the social media now, but now we see as it you know in the nineties it just had a the Gracies right, right. and then blew up and then now you throw us a rock down the street and there's a yeah. black belt somewhere and, and it's evolving so fast even even a fifteen year old is better than most people oh, yeah. right so okay. by saying that now there's social media and there's YouTube videos and all that you kind of gravitate to the ones that are more the older guys that are more efficient like yeah. we just say uh not technique based 
almost like I said, how I crossed over from mitzvah into, into the Tai Chi. You can hear the same words, right, Bill? It's like a connection to the ground, move 45 degrees, connect to your opponent, use their center. And, and it's like, but they're doing it on the ground. Yeah. It's identical term terminology. And then you can see like, you, but you know, we're not, we're not ground fighters. You right. can see, yeah, if I did this and grab the fascia and I connected the center, I can do the sweep also. But maybe when we're actually in the group, we can't do it. But that just takes familiarity and physical work. Yeah. But that that always intrigues me. It always teases me. I want to go there. But like you said, the injuries are there. Um, well, well, go ahead. No, I was just going to say it depends on your training partner a lot. 100%. You, you know, I I know a guy who got his neck broken doing jiu-jitsu. He's uh, about my age, maybe a little bit older. And it wasn't – it was just because he was, he was rolling with a guy that was a lot younger and had something to prove and, and – but you know, on the other hand, you look at guys like Hicks and Gracie now, who's in his sixties and has Parkinson's disease, and you watch him like rolling. And like you said, he's so technical that it looks like he's just you know barely doing anything. But his his, his technique is so superb. And all you hear is his. He, all you hear from him is breathing and connection. Right. Yeah. Every workshop you've seen him in work, uh, let's say in, in in videos, work to connection, connection. He doesn't go do an arm bar, do a flying triangle. He never says that. Right. Who I really like right now is I know Hickson. Unfortunately, that's the Parkinson's has kicked in, and it's it's kind of sad. Uh, his cousin, um, I, I'm saying it wrong, Machado, Machado, the Machados. Oh, the that, Machado, like Keegan Machado. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, oh, the I I love his, the the four brothers. I think there is. Yeah, I yeah. Love the how they move. Oh, same thing. Just I just shift my weight like this, and then it's it's done. Versus do this and this and this technique and that technique and it's just overwhelming right so you're you're 100 about the partner it's and the teacher right i need to find a teacher that says just like machados just move your way like this now let's do that and it's not the same way in in the internal arts right. i read yeah. he goes do that drop your elbow let's train that for next month right. i don't want to learn a thousand techniques in five forms i don't even care right so <laughs> I want to find a jiu -jitsu. If I find a jujitsu teacher that does what I just said, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I'm going there, right? right yeah. 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 So yeah, everyone, everyone needs to learn at least, if not ground fighting, you know, what Tim Cartmel calls ground proofing, you know, learning to stay up off the ground or, or get back up off the ground. Right. You have yeah. to learn. So 100%. and he, of course, he knows. He's 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 a black belt jujitsu. Well, yeah, Tim, yeah. Yeah. Right. He's, Yes, Tim, exactly. Tim knows a little bit. Well, he not a little bit of everything. He knows <laughs> it's way beyond us in the gray. Yeah. 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 So yeah, yeah. No, one hundred percent. Like so, I I did, of course, like yourself. You you know, you have rest. Like you took some jujitsu or dabbled in a little bit. Of course, we all have done it, right? Or a friend who wrestled with us and so forth. I did take a I would say like a handful of lessons from from some people, right? And even so, Bill, even those those five lessons, we'll say. I yeah. felt really good already. Like if someone took me to the ground today, I'm pretty confident. Even those five, I didn't learn anything, right? But I'm okay. Yeah. Because you're kind of comfortable there. But as you know, traditional fighters, let's be honest here. Take take a traditional fighter off their feet if they've never been on the ground for, they are a fish out of water. They're just pretending, right? You're having, no, I'll use pong energy and I'll punch like this and it works. No, no, it does not work like that. <laughs> right? Someone's gonna squeeze your neck into a, <laughs> a little ball in a second it's so, a different it's a different world for sure different world yeah i am um, i feel if i want to do jujitsu i want to know just enough just to be confident to get back on my feet like how tim said tim carmel said right just to get just to learn how to stay off off the ground just learn enough to if you can go down there you're comfortable you can come back up get out of that situation right okay. yeah yeah i'm not i'm not going to compete in an 80 cc's or anything <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> right. That was past. That is past. That's way past. You know. Oh, sorry. Just to jump. But the funniest thing I just I just thought about it is that uh, the people that are teaching me right now yeah. in Regina, there was a main teacher in in the city that taught all of them because it branched out, right? And they're all amazing jujitsu people. Amazing, amazing. The guy who 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 taught them all, I was with him when he started with VHS tapes. Really? Yeah. I was like kind of friends with him and yeah. kind of he's challenging me. He's actually challenging me. And I didn't know I didn't know what a tap was. He guillotined my head, goes, let's let's try it out. So me and him, I tried my Tai Chi and he did his <laughs> jiu off a of VHS tape, whatever he did. And then uh, he, he guillotined me at the time and I was I was gonna pass out. And I didn't know what tap was. At the oh. time this is the first UFC, the second UFC, I would I don't know what a tap was. 
And I was passing out almost. He goes, tap, tap. Go, What's a tap? Right? <laughs> so saying that, so I, if I started then, I would be pretty good at jiu-jitsu because that's my friend. And he taught all these guys I want to learn from now. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of have a regret, but same time as where would I be today? I, I don't know. That's, that's right. Yeah. Point. You would have never learned the things that you've learned. Exactly. I might have been damaged. I, you know, I might have broken my arm or who knows, ankle. Or whatever. Right, right. So looking back over your, your martial arts career, you know, I'm sure that you had some people that you trained with when you were younger that don't train at all anymore. Mm -hmm. How is your life different than their lives as far as like your physicality and like your sense of, um, I'm sure you don't feel like you're 54 years old. You probably feel younger than that, right? Mm -hmm. you, you mean in contrast to my friends who did train? Who did train but stopped. Like wow. if you had any trains this. Well, like, <laughs> most people was not because of injury. We just, we just talked about injuries, right? Um, some people, was, you know, they lose interest and so forth. Right. Family and life takes over. I don't totally understand that. In comparison, um, I don't want to, you don't want to feel arrogant because that's just, that's, that's weird to say you're arrogant because you feel good. Um, you... You just you just feel and you just feel you move better you feel better than them but you're also kind of you also want to help them right. if they want it right. and it's not saying hey if you took if you took martial arts when I took martial arts and you stuck with it you would have been good in such a way yeah, of I don't look at it that way I, I never I don't care right because we're on the same journey there's just there's no end to it um, that's a weird that's a typical cliche to say but um, yeah I to see these people no I I. I I wish they would continue. I, I would love to, because I'm so passionate about it. I'm most passionate about just, just the art. I, I don't care about getting rank or who's better. Right. Or so if they would like to come back, I would love to train with them and help right. them. And uh, even present day, Bill, uh, when I when I train right now, my whole approach is different. In, in the last even year, it's a, very different. Even the last few months is very different. How I, I uh, because I know I'm, I'm, I moved back to Regina. I was in Vancouver for 10 years. I moved back to Regina and now I have new beginners, right? Yeah. You can't go through that crazy uh, rigorous training I did or, or that. You, you see this person goes, I have a bad knee. I haven't, I have a solution for it. Yeah. That's not, you know, right. That's, right, exactly. So the mitzvah combined with the Tai Chi, with the mechanics, but at the same time, you get the little joy because they came to you because they want to learn Tai Chi. They want to learn the moves, right? They want to learn single whip and all that. So, but at the same time, I can uh, put, put my concepts in from the mitzvah, from what I've in my past experiences to help them. So saying that, I hope I, the people I, I know from the past, I wish they would continue. Um, I kind of you know coax them a little bit, try to entice them, but if they come, they come. If they don't, what do you do? But, but in comparison, yeah, uh, my body is pain free. Right. And Muslim are not. And I'm not saying it in a bad way, right? No, I like, understand. Yeah, that's kind of what I was getting at because I, I just feel like I, I look at some other people my age that used to train and don't anymore. And um, it's not that I'm gloating about it, but I, I feel like I'm, you know, having an easier time of it physically than they are in, in a lot of ways because, you know, that's that's the that's the real self-defense part of martial arts. It's about the longevity, right? You know, it's about your health. Um, right. Yeah. So it's great that you've kind of moved back and got a new start in a sense, because I imagine that you've, like you said, you've had to change the way that you teach compared to the way that you used to teach because of your involvement with this mitzvah method. Is that something that you talk to your students about? Do you sort of integrate that into your instruction at all? I always mention it. I always mention it in passing and then we're way because I don't think people are going to be. And every workshop I've taught, every class I've taught, what is this mitzvah you keep talking yeah. about? I thought I was just like, I kind of just said it and then, and then that was it. Yeah. People are now really interested. So of course now that's great that my, my, my friend here that who teaches mitzvah is in the city and we kind of collaborate. One of our best workshops was when we collaborated. One of my best workshops because she did one day and I did one day. It was just fantastic for my students and, and just, just viewing it. It was just a uh, uh, part of the, yeah. Yeah. The best, also successful, not just successful, most uh, gratifying workshop we ever had. So saying that, yes, um, the mitzvah, because um, I, I, people always come out of class. Some people think coming out of class thinking, well, I learned all this techniques from it. That was a great wrist lock or, or whatever, a great trip. Sure. But it's most rewarding for me when someone comes out there, there's no pain in my shoulder. Oh, that felt great, Ron. My spine feels better. I, I, I like that. That I get the most joy out of that, and myself included. When I, you know, kind of uh, in a selfish way, 
when I'm doing when I'm doing uh, martial arts uh, or tai chi and then apply the mitzvah to it, when I come out of there, I feel twenty times better, right? Um, so just jumping back again, Abel, what? Because I said I, I was going to mention this earlier, but I, I lost train of thought. Of course, you know I'm all over all over the place. But the connection with gravity. That's yeah. what you would achieve at the beginning as a fundamental of Tai Chi and all traditional arts, the connection to the floor. That's mitzvahs. Mitzvah's main fundamental. Now, when there's force coming at me, how can I revert that into that? Right. Walking around addicted to bring it on force. <laughs> I, I want something, I want a bird to land on me so I can I can activate my skeleton, right? The more force, the better. If someone's trying to, if a 300 pound guy is trying to tear off my arm, let's do it. And then uh, th basically, I always said to my, my students, I always like this. Basically, when you're trying to rip me in half, you're giving me a massage. <laughs> I'm I'm releasing yeah. because I'm not trying to fight back. I'm grounding. I'm connecting back into you. I'm using your center of gravity. And now we're all, we're harmonizing, right? We're harmonizing to one. Hence, you know, all the Peng Jian and all that. We're harmonizing to one. And it just takes one, one edge. Like you're on the edge. We're both on the edge. It takes one drop on either side. Right. Who takes over, right? We know this, yeah. Four ounces, right? Right. Four, exactly. And it, you know, the four ounces, like just getting into the technique part, you know, it's this ego, right? Um, I've done, so this, you know how it's like, uh, I'll go jump back to magic. When I when I mess up a magic trick, and I'm, I done, I've done hundreds of times in, in front of people, right? But you remember those two times that you messed up. Sure. In workshops, I, you know, in front of strangers, you, you got people who are trying to challenge you, you teach even your own classes. You, your, my ego kicks in a little bit sometimes. Oh, you just do this and people jump away or fly away, right? So I remember those five times where it glitched. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, right. right? So I always go back to the drawing board right after. And you, you just you shake your head. Like, what happened there? That person grounded me. I couldn't even lift. And I was embarrassed in front of 30 people. And uh, that person did this. And I tried too hard. And I, and I looked kind of embarrassed. So the solution was always 100% of the time, I didn't dissipate. Or you can say my ego got caught. I, I tried to do something without any um, a deliberate action. I didn't think I was asleep because I thought I could do it every time. I got too confident. But the solution was always dissipation. Always, always dissipation. I net force. I didn't take the force of the edge. Mm. And, and that's a, another big thing. So when I when I solo practice now, we can, so Bill, we can only do so much. You, you relax, you unbind, you stand there, you do, you do your forms, you, you unbind. How can I maintain this at all times? That's the, that's like the analogy, um, the the analogy to life, isn't it? Just being present, not right. over, not getting angry, not not sad, no, not, not getting you too emotional. We're just being present. So you can. That's, tai Chi is the physical manifestation of that. Just staying present, no ego, but dissipate, listen, and dissipate. Yeah. So it's very interesting. I, I, that's where I am now, and philosoph philosophically and my own training and uh, importing it to my students is just dissipation. But you got to have the fun part too, because people get bored. You can see in their eyes. You got to throw a wrist lock in and throw it and make them feel something. Right. But yeah, you got to trick them. You know? yeah, yeah. 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 You got to keep them somehow. Right. But because my, you know, my 10, 20 year students, they're already, they're already done. They're, they're, they're in, they can't come. They see behind right. the curtain. Already. They can't come back yeah, up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The new students, you got to keep them somehow. Right. Yeah. yeah. I heard a funny quote one time that said something like, um, Kung Fu is just a way to trick 13 year old boys into meditating. <laughs> I've never heard of that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That's, that's, a good, quite good. that's quite true. good. There's a lot of truth to it. You spend your whole life doing this type of stuff. And this is where we end up is, you know, embodying, you know, the practice. Right. Removing, but you've heard of this, the, the Tai Chi or internal arts is the art of subtraction, just removing all this yeah. the errors and the, the, the emotions that the baggage, yeah, and just just hundred percent. You're hundred percent right. Yeah. It's really um, kind of a soul searching art where you, when you get into it, in the end, you, you realize that's what you're you're trying to help with your students. You get rid of all this emotional baggage. It's not just learning forms. Yeah, that's the fun part, the the right. super theatrical part. But just removing all that, and just being a, a good community. Like, isn't it when you teach or or practice with people, the most joyous part is just hanging out and and yeah, practice. absolutely, yeah. It's Amazing, right? Watching Amazing. people have fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then you know that light bulb that goes off. That's like, oh, I Bill, I you know this too. I love this, and and people who can listen to this podcast, uh, my students are listening. They know this for a fact. They regurgitate that thing back to me. Ronnie, Ronnie, 
it's 45 degrees and you spiral. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. I said that 400 times this week already. Right. Yeah. But this is the first time they've heard it because yeah. they yeah, yeah. got it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can hear oh, it a bell. Relaxation, right? It's, it's relax. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's always, it's it's more true when you actually realize it for yourself rather than, you know, have somebody tell it to you. But yeah, it's, it's all like being a parent in a way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, it's like, it's like I, I'm not, I'm not a parent, but the, uh, I've seen people who are, the, the kids won't listen to the parents, but the exact words can come from someone else. They'll listen to that stranger. Yeah. 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 Like, it's like, it's the same thing with me, like because I teach, and then my students just hear this. It goes in one ear, out the other. It's basically, you know, this is the funny thing my students always say: yin yang, blah blah blah. It's all you say. But when when another classmate says that same thing, oh, yeah. really, yeah. really? That's the, Ronnie. This guy taught me this because, but I taught you that for the last five years. You didn't listen to me, right? It's it's very odd. It's it's, it's really it's a uh, it's pretty humorous. Yeah, yeah it's a common occurrence. It's funny. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's the same thing. So, Bill, it's the same thing. In 1996, when Master Liu finally, this is all he, because I can't speak Chinese at the time, right? Yeah. I was doing stuff, and Chen Zhenghua caught me. Chen Zhenghua kept catching me at a certain spot, right? Master Liu comes over. So, what he, this is all he said. So, 2006 was the mitzvah. This day, in a hotel parking lot, my Tai Chi jumped another level. In one word, so all he said was this. <laughs> he didn't even say any words. He just said this. He, he, he imitated me. He goes, I got caught, right? He goes, yeah, too high. He goes, he goes like this. He goes, yeah, yeah. So when I did it, <laughs> another world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said we had the curtain. It was another world. So every time Chen Zhang tried to get me here, oh yeah, that's all we need to do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's really, really, really. Yeah, those light bulb moments are the best. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The older you get, they come at farther and farther intervals. <laughs> when you're younger, they come quickly. Right. Right? Well, there's so many more things to learn, right? Yeah, yeah. Right now, what else is there? There's connection, pong, right? All these little uh, requirements for a pong. I, I don't, I don't like that word pong too much because it's saying relaxation. So, right. yeah. I mean, so many things happening all at once. Right, yeah. And, as you know, terminology is the worst thing. The human language is is amazing, but the worst thing to misinterpret be limiting yeah exactly, exactly. so everyone said i have pung or i have sung or i have this and that well it depends on your level of maybe you do maybe i was the same thing back in the day maybe five years from now i'll be like whatever i told bill was was no good and today is good because only the present time you're at your best right you know so yeah it's it's our interpretation at that moment and our wording at that moment it means completely different things like you you've interviewed many people you learn from many people it's basically different wording, the exact same thing. Yeah, the principles don't change. Yeah. Don't change. No, not so exactly. You, you've undergone a, a lot of a lot of changes yourself, a lot of evolution in your practice. What what do you see as the future of martial arts going forward? Like our martial arts, a traditional martial art. Martial arts. Hmm. Of course, this is because uh, you're interviewing me. This is my own personal point of view. I'm sure. not criticizing anything. No. I. Well, I, I think none of us are delusional. Um, we see these challenge matches or we see, you know, even ourselves going out and we, we, we practice with a friend and they kick us and we can't do a, do a roll back against a sidekick or you know, something simple as trivial as that. As, as far as the internal arts go, depends. this is highly dependent on your objective, what your goal is in the end. If you want it for health, it's fantastic, right? You want it for uh, something neat, neat you can do every day. That's like a martial art. But to call it to, to what I mean by delusional, as we all know this, to say that I'm doing this, I'm doing this art, and I can fight with it, right? I can go in the street and fight with it. What is your objective? What was what was it made for, right? So what? How are you practicing? How are you practicing for what your goal is? If you're gonna do it as a martial art, you better go you better have mastered the fundamentals and go to a jiu-jitsu school, go to a kickboxing school and try it out and validate it. Mm. All right. Sure. Then you can call it, okay, I'm kind of merging into the martial art part of it. The, 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 um, the state of it, the problem here is because there's so much, mm, I'll use the word delusion again, that some people think they have that as a martial art and it makes it not valid anymore. 
people are getting beat up or, you know, um, and I, 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 that's the very superficial part of it, which I don't like, I dislike. But again, if we call it as a martial art, we train it as a martial art. And this is our journey. And and it, 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 like you and I just talked about it, those little little intricacies, those little subtle motions as a martial art, if someone does a headlock on me and I can just relax my my ankle and something connects, that's been, that's amazing. That's that's part of the path into the martial art. To say I can go out in the street fight with it, no, it's not. I'm not looking for, for to, internal arts was not meant to go out and look for a fight. Right. In fact, you're so you're so in, in a in a word you're truly self defense. You yeah. come to me. And if I have to use it, I'll use it. If I can use it as best as, as best as my ability can handle. But on a health side, if you're if you're pursuing it for health, the, the traditional arts, finding the right teacher, understanding the, the body connection. If this person understands the body connection, and put it into that art, I don't care if it's Bagua Shingi, whatever. Amazing. If yeah. longevity, as we talked about, longevity is so key. Health wise, so key. The fun part, sure. A little bit of little bit of power there. A little bit of you know, you can uproot your opponent. Beautiful, and you get to that stage. Um, push hands, and uh, the as we know, a push hands is that st stage of connection and, and really listen this force. And some people, as you know, Bill, we're, some people are just amazing at it. And almost that's another problem. Looks fake. The student complies too much. True. You talk, oh, they jump through a wall. And they, they go there. <laughs> this person, I'm not saying they don't have skill. Yeah. The problem here, they, the student taught them to be fake. Yeah. And it's oh yeah, student. absolutely. Right? So I, I'll just I'll, I'll 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 quickly end this my my little my little uh, rant here. I quickly say something when I was doing a, a push hands workshop in uh, in the east, and this the student who there's a lot of students who take other martial arts very experienced right, but they yeah. get used to that connection and they jump. Yeah. So the person jumped, and I and I know I didn't do it. I know I didn't do it. Yeah. As I was in there pushing hands, I was showing the technique in front of the workshop. I whispered into his ear, I go, he, I can feel him ready to pop. I go, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I just stop it. And I did the same thing. I, I taught students in Vancouver. Um, I'll give credit to my, my friend. His name is Tim. I was kind of connecting. I, I want him to feel the connection. So I kind of pushed myself off of him. Right. right? You want him to structure out, right? So you, you push him. And he goes, Ronnie, that doesn't help me. You, you've got to put force into me. So I, I, I challenges me. I go, right. So I stopped doing that. And another fact, the only time I hurt myself, Bill, is when I fake it. Yeah. When I'm right. hurt myself, yeah. someone, oh, oh no, I hurt my back. <laughs> yeah. So my, so my girlfriend at the time, she goes, you got to stop faking. You come home with injuries because you're faking your jumps. So I stopped doing it, but you can't, you can't overpower a student. Right. But getting back to the state of the, the, the art of the, the, I mean, the state of the traditional arts, it's still very valid, still um, um, relevant to our, our, we'll say, society, our system right now, is because we can, it's something to practice. It's something to integrate, integrate uh, motion. Traditional-wise, keep the traditional. Unfortunately, it's only the, the, the school called Big Masters have passed away, right? Big names. Um, but if we can keep that up and kind of pass it on, it might be a small group of us. So right. be it. Fantastic. And those are the ones that, you know, um, they will get pushed to the wayside. Like, I'm a, I'm a deadly martial artist. I'll take on any all comers with my Tai Chi. You'll get, if you're not practicing for that, you're not going there. Right. I'm not saying that can't happen. There might be one guy, one day one person comes in, I'm used Tai Chi in the UFC, right? <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. But we're, we're, it wasn't meant for that. It's just right. not meant to go stand toe to toe with another human in front of you like this. It was not meant for that. So I believe in that. So I'll train myself personally, just for my personal and my students and people I can pass it on to. This is a good art for, for body mechanics, pain-free. If you want to do it as a martial art, you better train hard, get the fundamentals. If you want to go there, you got to be stubborn and just keep going, <laughs> right? And yes, you, you might want to quit. So be it. Just just train for the for the health part of it. Right. right? But don't be delusional. Don't go out there thinking someone's gonna grab your wrist and you you wrist like <laughs> and it bounces the walls. But yeah, so yeah. Well, it sounds like you're doing a lot of great work, and um, we're gonna put links in the description so people can find you. But would you like to tell them where they can find you if they want to find out more about what you're doing and your teaching? Um, 
I my website has not been <laughs> updated for so long, but you can reach me um, on Ron Yi Tai G, so R O N uh, Y E E T A I J, but without the I, it's, it's a one. So Ron Yi Tai G, but with the one at the instead of the I then at gmail.com. It's the best to just email me, and then I, once we get in contact, you know I can give you a number. Um, like I said, the website has not been updated, so I um, there's nothing really there to look at. There's no content. Um, I have a few videos on YouTube, but which is really outdated, like from 2017 to 2013, you, people might see those. Um, it's okay to watch that, it's just to see what I do, but at the same time as I've changed, evolved it to, even like I said, three months ago, it's kind of evolved even more, and I'll you know, keep going with that, but yeah, it's best to just to contact me, I'm very informal, like you can, we can tell here, um, I stay low-key, right, it's hard to find me sometimes. I appreciate it, Ronnie, it was great talking to you.